always excited to preach to you and teach you God's message. We started a, a series on the Ten Commandments. Last week, we learned about the heart of God. Why did He give us the Ten Commandments? Why did He give us the Ten Commandments? We tried to look into the heart of God. Why God did give Moses the Ten Commandments for all the Israelites to follow? We need to understand all of these things. Does He want us to live a difficult or restricted life? Restricted life? Did He give the commandments so He may catch us and punish us just what police authorities do? Is, was that His purpose? God's commandments are not restrictive but protective. We learned that last week. Amen? Say it with me. God's commandments are protective, not restrictive. Firstly, he gave the list so that the Israelites can recognize sin. Amen? He gave that list so that the Israelites would know and recognize what sin is. Secondly, he gave the commandments so that they will have the opportunity to prove their love for him. The commands of God is not, will not, it will discomfort us, of course, but it will protect us. And it gives us the opportunity to show how much we love Him. Are you still with me? Amen. Amen. But most, like all of us for a time, most of us never wanted our, our freedom to be disrupted. We want to do our own thing. Amen. We continue to justify every decision that we make that is against the commandments of God. See, God created us because He cannot contain His love. Are you with me? And then He, he, has, he begot a son. And both of them, because they're pure love, they cannot contain it, so they created man. And when they created man, they created man in our image. In, he said, in our image, in our likeness, right? So we, our, our original image, our original personality is the personality of God. But when He created us, He gave us also free will. Amen? He gave us free will. It's the power to choose. That's why He gave that tree, the, the tree of the knowledge of what is good and evil. It's because he wanted, he wanted to feel also the love of His creation. Are you with me? And the only way we can do that is when we obey Him. When we obey Him. Most of us parents, right? When our children obey, right, we feel how much they love us. Amen? Right? But there are those who obey because of an ulterior motive. Many Christians walk that way. They obey. Why? Because they have a prayer request. Obedience must come from a pure love from the heart. Amen? Obedience because you do not want to disappoint the heart of God. But what happened was Adam fell. He, he exercises free will. But in disobeying God. That way his relationship with God was cut off. Are you with me? It was cut off. Before he can talk to God face to face. But now because of that it was cut off. But God still loves humanity. He still loves us. And us people surrounded and covered, multiply, they had now total independence from God because of their knowledge of what is good and evil that they took from Adam. Are you following my story now? Yes. Until now, we live independently from God. We just go to worship services, to church. Why? Just because of an obligation. Just because, you know, uh, I might, when at the time comes, I may say to God, Lord, I go to your worship service. I'm part of ACCI. 
God loves us so much. In fact, He chose Israel to bring everyone back to Him. He covenanted with that nation Israel to show His power so that everyone will see that He is and know that He is God. Amen? <clears throat> Just like He has chosen you for a reason. He has chosen each and every one of us now that Jesus is living in us. He has chosen you so that God may perform His blessings and miracles in your life. Why? So that people will see, amen, that He is God, that there is a God. But still, the Israelites have a hardened heart. You know, and, most of, and most often than not, those who were very religious, the Pharisees themselves, have hardened their hearts. Amen? Some of us here probably, you know, sometimes, oh, pastor is repeating what, what was yesterday, uh, last week, and then you start to sleep. Because you say, I already know about it. That's why in James, the Apostle James said, do not just be hearers of the word, but do worse, or else you will just be fooling yourselves. But still, the Israelites of those times hardened their hearts. And one final, one final act of love, of grace and mercy is when He gave His only begotten Son. Amen? He gave the best, the purest, that which will answer all the requirements of holiness. And who could that be? His only begotten Son. And His Son loved us so much that He gave up His life willingly while we were still sinners. Are you with me? Amen. And Jesus Himself gave a message, a very clear message. In the book of John, it says, God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, right? That whosoever believes in Him but will not perish, but have everlasting life. Not all of those who know Him and believe in Him will enter the kingdom of God. Because in John chapter 14, he says, Those who have my commands and obey them are those who truly love me. Amen? The same commandment, the same heart of God when he gave the Ten Commandments. He wanted to, to, for his creation to obey him because that is the only way we can show how much we love him. And then he made it, Jesus Christ made it very clear. Search for my commands. Have my commands. Hide your com my commands in the heart or in your heart and obey. Amen. And obey. Today we're going to tackle or we'll talk about the first commandment, and I have entitled the message today: <coughs> "Our God and the One True God." Our God and the One True God. Our scripture, scripture reading will come from Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 3. Can you read this with me, please? And God spoke, spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. Who was speaking here? It was God himself. Amen? The, our divine God. And he says once again, he made himself known, I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out of Egypt. Remember how I brought you out from Egypt? Remember? Remember the plagues? Remember those? Remember when, when, I, when I opened you know, the, 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 the Red Sea and you walked on it? Remember? That was me. Don't forget that. Amen? Remember when I answered some of your problems? Seemingly difficult problems, that was me, says God. He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Out of the land of slavery. Tell your seatmate if you sin, you're a slave to sin. If you love sinning, you are a slave to sin. 
And then he says, you shall have no other gods before me. Did he say, I request that you do this? He did not, right? If you have time, or if you have the opportunity, or kung carry mo, well, it's not been you shall have no other gods before me. Why did God say that? He, we are His creation. That's why He knows us. Amen? You know what happened? After God gave Moses the tablets of the Ten Commandments, then God also gave him so many instructions. And it took long before, before Moses went down, came down from, from Mount Sinai. And Aaron, the leader whom Moses entrusted, was there. And the Israelites were there also. They became impatient. You see, why is this guy taking too long? He, he could be dead right now. Who are we waiting for? Come on, let's make our own gods. And then, and then later on in Exodus chapter, chapter 32 verse 1, put it up again, put it up please. It says in Exodus 32 chapter 1, When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. They became, they grew weary. They became impatient. And what did they do? How did they respond to this? He says, they even coerced the leaders. He says, hey, Aaron, come on. Let's create ourselves our own gods. And Aaron, because of pressure, obliged. Amen? He was pressured into doing this. And he himself commanded, take all of the gold earrings and everything that's make, you know, uh, 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 an idol. And they did in a form of a calf. And that, imagine, hello, look at me now first. You know, they gathered all of the, 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 uh, all of the gold. And then they melted it. They melted it. And they, it came out to be in the form of a calf. Amen? Amen? Did it accident? Did they have, you know, did they have this mold to do that? Or do you already have an idea? No. It came out to be in the form of a calf. Amen? Amen? Sino po ang pwedeng gumawa niyan? Hello? Sino pwedeng magpagalaw kay Santo Nino na bato? Hello? Sino pwedeng magpagalaw? Sino pwede mag-drawing sa talukap ng ng ano ng uh, ng uh, crab ng itsura doon? Sino? Amen. You see, a living being you, a human as Satan cannot touch us unless we allow him to or unless God allows him to. Amen. The, the same way that God cannot touch us unless we allow him to. Are you with me? Now it came out to be a calf. And they worshipped it. And got you about it. There's one word. One word that is very important. That, that we are also being, we, we are victims of this. And that word is impatience. Hello? Impatience. They were impatient. And when you're impatient, you think about so many things, right? When you're impatient, you analyze, you know, too much analysis leads to paralysis. <laughs> and they did many assumptions. He could be dead right now. Why are we going to, why do we wait for him? Let's make our own. And for all of us to relate to this, we are also our victims of the same of impatience. What are the gods? You know, this impatience leads us to worship gods. Our own man-made gods. And let me just share with you some. Some of the gods that man unknowingly replaces God with. Number one is religion and man-made traditions. Religion and man-made traditions. 
By the way, remember when Jesus Christ was, was tempted by Satan after four years of fasting? You know, what was the what was the foundation? What was uh, the what was it that Satan wanted Jesus to surrender to him? It's impatience. It's, it's, it's patience, right? He says, you know, take, eat this bread. No. You are God. No. Show that you are God. This stone. Make it bread, right? Now, now, if you worship me, I will give to you everything. Amen? He says, now. 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 Most of us are like that. When we pray, we want God to answer when we finish our prayer. <laughs> are you with me? When we pray, we want God, you know, Lord, give me patience, and I need it now. <laughs> are, you, are you following what I'm saying? So be careful. Impatience is the one effective tool of the enemy. Now listen, religion and man-made traditions. This was some of <laughs> most of human beings. You know, this is, we have made it as a God. People kill for their religion. Come on. Jesus Christ never taught us to kill. Hello. You know, when, 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 when the royalties, no? When Constantine and all of this, uh, you know, big time uh, uh, people during those times when Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, they received, became Christians, right? But out of, out of pride, he says, you know, this is what God wants us to do. And what does God wants us to do? You know, to conquer and convert people. Convert them. But how do we convert them? If we conquer them, we can convert them. They thought that they were following Jesus. Amen? But who were they following? Religion, not Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ taught us, if somebody slap you on the right, give him on your left. Amen. There was a debate between a Muslim and, uh, and a Christian. And then, of course, the Muslim was, you know, he, telling, uh, he was uh, disputing about the authenticity of the Bible. He says, how, what, how can men do this? You know, how can the teaching of Jesus Christ is unimaginable? You see, and then he says, and that guy, the one who is debating with, a Christian apologetics he says I would like to prove to you that this is not right and he called the doctor come doctor can you come here and then the Christian apologetics whom he was doing debate with you know what he did he slapped him in the face bah! and then he waited for a retaliation and while the color of his face turns red. He gave his left cheek. But of course, the teacher, the one who is debating with, did not. Amen? Because he knew. So what he says, you know, if somebody steals your cloak, give it to them. And then he, sa he, 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 he said to that guy who was, who was, he, he was debating with, he says, take off your trousers. Take off your clothes. And then the guy was says, like, he faced the audience and said, please forgive me. And then he took off his clothing. And then after that, that guy was laughing at that, at that apologetic, Christian apologetics. He was laughing. But the guy never finished the debate. He took his clothes and silently walked out of the seminar room, the conference room. You know, the following day, the following day, in his office were a huge line of Muslims who wants to talk to him to ask for an apology. Amen? See, why is it that we die for a religion? We kill for our religion. You die for a religion, but don't kill for a religion. Amen? Religion has become our God. 
You know, when people say, Jesus Christ himself said in the last days, there will be those who will call themselves the Christs. The Christ meaning the Savior. And there are churches now outside, they would, they're claiming, if you are not part of this church, you will go to hell. There are these churches who go, you know, if you sing a loud song, you know, these are songs of the devil, you will go to hell. There are even those who go the extra mile, which gives, which cringes me. It says, you know, I am the only one who can interpret the Bible. And lately, there are those who claim themselves now as the Son of God. Religion has become a God to us. You see, like, you don't obey, you obey. Why? Because, you know, if I don't obey, this blessing might be taken away from me. This blessing that I enjoy now might be taken away from me. Hey, you're making religion as a God. You're making prayer as a God. Amen? I remember... The, the, the sharing of uh, Brother Miguel. So he was in the last leg of a multi-million dollar. He's a consultant. No business. That, that day, he was about to meet with investors. And then well, that's when he was put to jail. And he could have reacted, Lord, why now? <laughs> Amen. Did I do something wrong? Was there something that I did not obey? Why now? Are you real? But he never thought it that way. He says, Lord, I know you have, I do not know your purpose, Lord. I do not know your purpose. But I trust you more than my circumstance now. Amen. And then he discovered, you know, when he went inside the Alwat Bajel prison, there was Raju taking care of him. Let's give the Lord. And then Raju needed encouragement. And that is so, was the reason. He, he, was, he encouraged. You see, the Bible says, no, no temptation will come before you that is not common to man. Amen? And when it, it is strong now and you find it difficult, he will find a way out. He will provide a way out for you. Amen? Mm -hmm. And praise the Lord because Raju took hold of that provision. Now his mind is clear. Praise the Lord. But when she got, came out of jail, he found out that most of those who was, he was talking to were still waiting for him. All things will work together for the good of those who love God, whom he has called for a purpose. Jeremiah 29 says, I know the plans I have for you, not to harm you but to give you hope in the future. Amen? Don't just clap because he experienced it, because you have to experience it also. Put religion in the basket now. Stop being a Christian, a mere Christian. Start to be Christ-like. Do not let religion be your God. Man-made traditions. Jesus said, you are so strict you want your followers to, to, to obey your tradition, man-made traditions, forsaking the command of God. Amen? Sabi mo sa katabi mo, today is your day of freedom. Another God is this. The love of money. 2 Timothy 6.10 It is not money. <laughs> we as Filipinos, you know, we were brought up to think that we will always be poor. Ah, kanya lang yan, yung Jollibee, kanya lang yan, doon lang ako sa ano, araw sa kalito ni nanay. Pag doon lang ako sa turuturo, hindi ako pwedeng pass food, turuturo lang, point, point. <laughs> it has taken much of our self-esteem and self-confidence. Because we were taught to be, you know, stay poor. Hey, God wants us to be rich. Amen. But for His purpose, not yours. Jesus Christ said to Abraham, you know, I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. But many people suffer 
have become a victim because of the love of money. Those who have one million will crave for two million. Those who have two million will crave for ten million. Those who crave for ten million feel that they're still poor, they will crave for a billion. For what? What is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet forfeit his soul? Do not allow money to use you. Use your money. Amen? Let, do not allow, do not be money to be your master. Be the master of your money. Amen. You see, Papano, how, how else? You, you wanted to go, you wanted to, to, to level up on your career. I have no money. I have no money to, to study master's degree. Come on. Do not let money enslave you. God is a God of freedom. Amen. You're just you're just looking, you're just looking at it in a different place. Trust the Lord. Ask. He will. You want to level up? Naku, andyan na nga yung computer o internet. Ang dami kaya. Amen. Do not allow money to enslave you. The love of money is the root of all evil. The root of all evil. Another God, vanity. The love of self. Amen? There are those, no, they're already beautiful. You know, do you know that there is a sickness, psychological sickness, something like, you know, you, you love always to be under the knife. When you face, you know, when you face the mirror, oh, meron ako dito ganyan, punta kay doktor. Paayos ko nga itong teng, bakit kaya mga Pilipino, pango? No? And then you go to the doctor, dear doctor. Ang kapal nitong ano ko, bakit malaki itong aking joke? Dear doctor. Uy, check. Bakit? Dear doctor. <laughs> yung mga lalaki naman, no? Gusto magkaroon ng abs. Pwede na rin, surgically. <laughs> magkaroon ng abs. Vanity. I remember the movie. The movie, um, uh, The Devil's Advocate. At the last portion, you know, that, that believer was already uh, victorious against Satan. But because of popularity, no, he was trapped once again. And Satan says, vanity, my favorite sin. Amen. People want to have a boyfriend. Why? Because, no, so that they will uh, see that I am pretty. Wants to have a girlfriend. Why? So that these guys will see that, you know, I can get pretty women. Vanity. It's not what others say about you, my friend. It's what God tells about you. It's not what others think about you. It's what God thinks about you. Amen? I'm worried about, you know, if Michael Jackson was a Christian, if Michael Jackson was a Christian, I'm quite worried. Because when he faces the white throne judgment, his face is different. Are you really Michael Jackson? <laughs> Are you really Michael? You don't look like Michael Jackson. And then my, Michael Jackson says, I am Michael Jackson. Look! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Vanity. You know, it's not your clothes that matters. Amen? It's you, yourself. That matters. Amen? Sometimes it's our God. Next, relationship with other people become our God. <coughs> Jesus Christ Himself said, He didn't teach us to hate our parents. In fact, in the Bible, in the commandment it says, honor your parents, right? But Jesus Christ says, put me first. Put me first. He says, if you love your mother, your father more than you love me, you're, you're not, you know. If you love your wives more than me, come on. But was he teaching us to hate people? No. 
He was telling us, love me first, and then your loved ones will be benefited from it. Amen? Amen. Love me first, because if you love me first, your, your mother, your father, your brothers, your siblings, your children, your wife, your husband, will come to know that how good it is to be my child. Sometimes relationships. Sometimes, you know, Jesus, Lord, I open my heart to you, Lord God. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Stay, be the in residence in my heart, Lord Jesus. And then Jesus comes into your heart. But now you became 30, 35, 34. Lord, when I was still 15, I was already praying for a husband. I'm already 45 now. <laughs> and then somebody comes of a different religion. Lord, this is it. <laughs> and you know what? You evict Jesus Christ. Yeah? You evict Jesus Christ and replace Him with that person that who you really, really wanted to. Sabi nga daw, minsan ang pag-ibig, parang si Mayweather. <laughs> Matapos kang yakapin, tatakbuhan ka. <laughs> hugot yan, hugot. <laughs> Amen. So don't worry about your relationship because listen up if your relationship with Jesus is intact the other, all other relationships siya ang bahala sa iyo Amen to ba? He will take care of all of your other relationships The next is ha, Last of the flesh Patawarin po may mga bata ba? Sana ng tenga Sayang, Lord. Matanda na ako. Wala pa akong ano, experience. And you know, biologically, come on, listen, ladies and gents, this is true. Biologically, there is an age bracket when you will really long for this. Amen? You will really long for this. Beware. Beware. Do not give in to that. Do not make that your priority. Amen. You see, it's so wonderful if God, God, you know, if God, if God has somebody for you, even haranga mo yan ng sibat, sa yun yan. Amen. 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 Alam mo na pa kasarap kaya yung pagdumating ang pag pagdating na. You will offer yourself to that person pure. Amen? Pure. Pero huwag kang mag-alala kung nagkamali ka noon. Sapagkat ikaw, kapag nabuan again ka, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, pure ka na uli. Sabi nga, virgin ka na uli. Amen? Because you are a new creation now. Are you following what I'm following? Amen. Amen. Do, not, do not evict God because of the lust of your flesh. Ay, maintindihan naman ni Lord ito. Di ba, Lord, Christian naman siya. Patay tayo dyan. Hindi, Lord, sabi naman niya, pakakasala naman ako, Lord. Eh. Pwede ba, Lord, ano lang, para ma-prove ko lang how much I love Him or her. Ah. Do not be trapped. Amen? Lust is the enemies. You know, sex is meant for married people. Amen? It is, it is meant for married people. And then next is, eto pa isa, what's our gods? Worries of this world. Wow! Worries of this world. This some, some, you know, when you worry, you sin against God. You know why? You tell, you tell that God is nothing, can do any. You, you tell that God can do anything, but in this case, in my problem, He cannot do anything. He's nothing. Do not put your worries before God, because God, <coughs> who created the heavens and the earth, can do something. Amen. 
Do not worry. Do not worry. Do not worry. God will provide. How many of you here did not succumb to worry and God have provided? Come on. See? Praise the Lord. Praise God. <clears throat> Do not worry. Sometimes we make a... Oh, no. I, I remember there was a char char character. No? His, his name is Jinx. See, he always says, Oh, no. We'll never make it. Oh, no. We'll never make it. Every time, Oh, no. We'll never make it. You are a child of God. <coughs> Marvelous things can God do in you and through you. Amen? Do not worry. Be happy. Sabi mo nga sa katabi mo, do not worry. Be happy. Amen? You know, you have you have your de deadlines. Naku, hindi ka na matulog-tulog. Do not worry. Matulog ka. <laughs> you know, I remember Bea, my, my last week. You know, he was like, Lord. Papi, and dami, dami. So, so many things to submit, you know. I want to cry, I want to cry. And then, then say, but of course, of course I, I, I did not sleep for two days. Yeah, yeah. And then I reminded him, her. We reminded her, be still and know that I'm coming. You go to sleep. You know, the following day, the day of submission, they received a message. Submission was postponed. <laughs> Come on, man. Hello. If you worry of something, and that something that you worry about happens, you, you know, you, you lose twice, right? You worry, and it happened, right? But if that thing that you're worry, you're worrying did not happen, it did not happen, but you lose once, right? God says, "Be still and know that I am God." worry not. Amen. Finally, power and authority. You see, leadership is not having power and authority. Leadership is having influence. Amen. You can use power and authority to influence, but in a way that God wants you to. Power and authority. Don't crave for it. You know, I want to be a man. I'm a child of God. Lord, I want to be a supervisor. I pray, Lord, take him out of the company. <laughs> so that I can. If you want to be promoted, work as if you're working for God. Amen? Work as if you're working for God. There's so many things I have in mind, but I only listed these things. How about you? Do you still have many gods that you know that you replace God with? Or one true God with? God says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. In closing, what are the gods do you think can easily replace God in your heart? What other things do you think can easily replace God in our hearts? Our God wants the whole of us and not just a part of us. Amen? Religion is not just a part of our life. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is our life. He loves us so much that He wants us to be with Him in all purity. And how do we get purity? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. I'd like to challenge you today. Preacher, yes, is our people. Our challenge for today. <laughs> if we have unknowingly replaced God with other gods in our hearts, now is the time to repent. Amen? Now is an opportunity for you to repent. <clears throat> Let it be God's way in our lives. He gave us His Son who became like us so we can easily comprehend His heart. So we can easily understand His heart. Jesus Christ gave us exactly. His teachings gave us, showed us the heart of God. Can you trust God and surrender everything to Him? Can you trust God? It says in Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 8. 
trust in the Lord with all your heart and never rely on what you think is right. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. And He shall direct your path. Put this memory verse into heart. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. Next slide. When is the best time to obey God? The best time to obey God is now. Can you all stand up? Let's give the Lord a clap of Thank you, Lord God, for your word today. To those who were convicted, it was meant to be. So that you may come in humility and surrender your life to Jesus. If you're here today and you want to say, Lord Jesus, I would like to repent, Lord God. I have made so many gods before you. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Say this prayer with me, Father. Lift up your hands. Lord, Father, I lift up my hands in surrender to you. Forgive me, Lord God. Forgive me, Lord. If I have made so many gods before you, from now on, Lord, you are my only one true God. Help me, Lord God. Teach me. Shape my heart. Take charge. Renew my mind, Lord God, so that I may come to come, come to be like Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for because of what Jesus has done for us. Now, Lord, we will recall, Lord God, remind, Lord God, remind us of what Jesus has done. He gave us His life. He took away all the pain that we were supposed to experience in hell. But His body was nailed on the cross. There will be healing in our lives. Bless, Lord God, this cup representing your blood. The blood that was shed on the cross so that we may be cleansed Lord, from all unrighteousness. Bless the hands, Lord God, of my brothers and sisters who will share, Lord God, this element. My brothers and sisters now, in Jesus' name.